lifing. So lab marks, hopefully by end of this week, you will get lab zero and lab one uh, marks. You're welcome. Karine, about the midterm, uh, I'm still, in, still investigating this and I, I want to give you some information as soon as possible. Um, but given the circumstances we have currently, uh, I'm trying to explore the best and most effective way uh, with, uh, with the minimum overhead uh, uh, on you guys. So again, hopefully maybe by Friday lecture, I would have a much better idea because currently I'm exploring different options and uh, by Friday lecture, I will let you know. Um, so generally, aside from the environment, you will be asking to either write code, complete a code or correct a code or, or uh, trace a code to find the output. These are the nature of questions that I usually like to uh, ask in midterms and finals. So it's all about code. There, there is no theoretical uh, questions at all. Uh, everything is related to uh, some sort of code snippet, for example. Uh, even if I want to test a certain theoretical information, I would have this as a form of, uh, of code. Like, as I said, correcting a code, for example, that might have a mistake that you will not be able to get without knowing uh, a certain rule in, in C, right? Uh, so yeah, so it's it's again all about code, but the exact environment and more details. I would uh, I would I, I would let you know about this. There is only Nicole. There is only a single midterm uh, for twist H four. Um, we have forty percent for labs and the single midterm and the final. And uh, usually for the midterm, uh, what I do is I take the maximum of the midterm and the final. For example. Um, if um, by some mean you did a little bit less than expected in the midterm and you do much better in the final, I would take the maximum of these two and assign this to the midterm. You will find this in the course outline. Uh, Jiao Yang, for the lab marks, by end of this week, you would have uh, lab zero and lab one marks. Okay. Good, so uh, it's, it's 12.30, so let's, let's start. As I said at the beginning, these slides are already on Avenue. Last time we started uh, discussing pointers, and today we are going to a little bit delve in some more details. So as you will see, we will have pointers almost until the end of the C uh, part of the course, uh, because it's, it's a big topic. It has many associated um, uh, details and interactions with other types. Today we are going to see pointers and arrays. Uh, we have a little bit discussed this before when we said array name, for example, is nothing other than a pointer to the first element. But today we will have some examples about this and maybe some animations that show us exactly what is going on. Uh, Ian, the midterm uh, information is already on Avenue in one of the announcements. Is it practice midterms we can study from, Sarah? I, uh, I will look into this. Maybe hopefully I can by again by end of this week's like uh, put something on avenue for you to to practice. But but my general rule is try to practice your your lab questions and also in programming especially any question you can have multiple forms of it. So assume for example in lab two you have or lab one I don't know you have seven questions. Every question you can make ten out of ten variations out of it, right? So think of how you would implement this algorithm. You implement it in a different way. Um, uh, if, if something changes as a constraint, what you would do. So this is how I would personally practice. I would start from lectures, do all the examples that we have in the lectures because lectures are, um, are very rich with examples for every single uh, topic we discuss and make sure I can program these myself. Uh, and then afterwards, I would revisit the labs. Uh, again, like what I have seen last offering is those who are suffering with the midterm or the final are those students that didn't uh, invest enough effort in doing the labs themselves, right? So if you do the lab, you are sure uh, of all uh, 
the technical uh, capabilities behind each question, you would be you you would be very comfortable going through the midterm. So I I, I don't think you should worry too much. Um, if you do the lab yourself and you are sure of all the examples in the lecture. But as an extra practice, I, I might be able to post something on Avenue as well. Okay, thanks. Okay, so let's go through this. One thing about my exams is that maybe, uh, so some might see it as difficult, uh, but again, when I, I said with those students, uh, I believe uh, and, and we discuss personally, I, uh, most of the time I find that these are the students that didn't invest enough time in the lab. So as I said in multiple lectures, if you don't do the lab yourself, you, okay, you will pass the auto grading, you, you might even get the full lab mark, uh, but then this is not the whole point of the lab. The whole point of the lab is an exercise for you. So you lose this chance. And then you kind of get surprised when you go to the midterm, you don't do pretty well because you thought once you look into the solution, and this is a very common fallacy in programming. If you look to a, an algorithm solution and you understand it, you might think you are able to program it yourself. That's completely wrong, right? Because seeing the, the solution in front of you is something and trying to think about the problem from the beginning, from scratch, and develop your own thinking capabilities is a completely different story, right? So I would say this is how you should practice. Look into any question that we have in lectures or lab Think about it. And, and this is what I try to do with you sometimes during lectures, if we have time, uh, mainly during tutorials, if to see if instead of just giving you the solution, how we would approach it, how I would say, this is the algorithm. Maybe I would go through the general case. I, I figure out that we have a problem, go back and revisit it. So I want to develop this skill uh, on you, which is approaching a problem that initially you don't know the solution for. And over time, you kind of, refine your, your solution to work for the general case, right? Because this is what you would do if you go for an internship or work for, for any company uh, once you graduate. Good. So we spend uh, enough time talking about midterms, labs, and exams. So let's, let's jump into the technical content, right? As I said, last lecture, we started pointers. Pointers is uh, one of the topics in C that some people think is very hard, but if you understand, um, the mindset of pointers in C, you will be able to, to, to figure out the complex example. So it's, it's, it's a different story when you look into a coding example that has a lot of pointer usage and you don't know what is the theory behind it. And from the beginning, you develop your understanding one by one and, and you, will, you will see by the end of the C part, we will have some complex examples that include pointers of pointers, arrays, dynamic memory allocation. And hopefully by then, if you follow the mentality lecture by lecture, you will be, um, you will be understanding this in a very easy way. Uh, but don't leave everything until the last lecture because lectures build on top of each other, especially for the pointers course, uh, for the pointers part of the course. So make sure after each lecture, at least go through the slides, make sure you can think of the examples yourself. Good? Okay, so uh, last time we have seen some examples of what we call pointer arithmetic where you have defining a certain pointer and then you increase or decrease that pointer. Um, and we said a pointer is nothing other than a variable that holds an address of another variable. So pointer is like any other data type in C, holds a certain value. The special thing about a pointer is that this value is not a data, it's an address, right? So it's an address of another element. Uh, and you can do some kind of pointer arithmetic or operations on this variable. When we say pointer arithmetic, for example, you can add a value into the address, subtract a value. So for example, if we say P plus I, then we are saying that this pointer is pointing, so assume that B is, is pointing to a certain element in the array, okay? So you have an array, let's just try this here. So you have an array like this, and we'll have some examples now, but this is the general idea. Assume that B is pointing here. If you add I into B, you jump to the element, assume that this is element zero, then you'll go to element I. Generally, if this is element X, then you go to element I plus X, right? And this I plus X, how would the compiler or the C language knows which element it is if you only have this address? 
We said last time because the C compiler or the C language knows based on the array type, what is the size of each element? And based on this, it jumps over elements as we will see right now. The same thing for subtraction. So you go before this element. So addition, you, you jump forward in the array. Subtraction, you, you jump backward in your array. One thing to, to pay attention to here is that C doesn't have any array boundary checking. I have seen, uh, like I have been saying this almost in every lecture right now. Uh, so you can go whatever address you like, even if you are outside of your array elements, right? So you can e either jump afterwards or you jump forward and you are changing a certain element outside of the scope of the array. So you have to, to, to be very careful about this. Okay. So another thing here is, uh, so two things. The first one is if you have B as a pointer of a certain type, for example, B is a pointer of an int, if you add a value here, the resulting pointer or the resulting address is also a pointer of the same type. For example, if B was originally a pointer of double, then B plus I will also be a pointer of double, right? The second thing is if you have, and, and this is a, a result of what we just discussed right now, instead of just adding an immediate value of I or like two, three, four, you can add another pointer or subtract another pointer. What does it mean? Assume you have this array and you have B is pointing here while Q is pointing here. If you subtract both, you would get how many elements between these two elements that B and Q are pointing to, right? If you add both, then you just adding like the, um, like the index of this one and the index of this one, good? So, so let's have an example that is explaining this and then I look into question because I, I believe you might have questions uh, given the theoretical information, but the example might, might answer some of these. So assume I declare uh, an array uh, of, of double that has 10 elements from zero to nine. And then I define a pointer or declare a pointer. Remember from last time we declare a pointer by saying, what is the point, what is the element type that the pointer is pointing to? And then you have to use the asterisk word, sorry, the asterisk character to say that this is a pointer, which means here a pointer is a pointer that is pointing to doubles, right? And we said the asterisk can be here or it can be after the double directly, it doesn't really matter. Then if you say a pointer equal to, and remember, and is your address uh, operator, then you are assigning the address of the fourth element to the a pointer, which makes a pointer is pointing zero, one, two, three, four. So that means your a pointer is pointing here. Right, so it has the address of this element, good? By just saying this line. Afterwards, if you say a pointer plus three, what would happen? Can someone imagine what might happen if I increase three based on what we just said in last line? What, what do you think? A at seven. Yes, because you jump three elements afterwards, you add one, two, three, that means your A pointer will just come here. You say A pointer. This is plus three. So what we said as a rule in last slide is that first of all, if A pointer of type double, then the resulting pointer here is also of a type double. Good. And then its value is whatever. So I, I would say we didn't change this one. You, you maybe have another pointer here that is a pointer dash. We didn't already declare it, but this is where you are pointing right now. And it's going to hold the value that is at this address, which is seven in this case, right? So it points to a seven as your colleague said. And then another thing we discussed last lecture, which is dereferencing, right? Or getting the value of. So we said this and is the address operator while this asterisk is your value of operator. So here I'm saying, this is another way of saying A7 is to say A pointer plus three, which means here I'm moving my address and then get the value that this pointer is pointing to, which again is seven, right? So now if you assign this 10, what would happen? Your seven would be 10, correct? This is similar to the examples we've tried last lecture, but only for single variables. Now we are doing this for array elements, good? 
Great, so let me stop here and see if, if there are questions. Jan Hao, if we want B7, should we do A pointer plus three or A pointer plus equal three? Okay, good, that's a good question, Jan Hao. There is a difference between both, good. If you do A pointer plus three, this will result in, like this is an expression that evaluates to a certain value, which is the address of seven, but this doesn't change A pointer, right? It's like saying X plus three. This is an expression that doesn't change X itself, right? While if you say X plus equal three, now this is going to update X to in increment or to increment it three or, or adding three into it, right? So you see the difference between these two, right? This is exactly the difference between the two things you mentioned. A pointer plus three is an expression that is going to evaluate to the address of seven, but A pointer didn't change. This is why I said, me minimize this. This is why I said uh, here, I'm not moving a pointer itself. I'm kind of resulting in a new address that is another virtual pointer that is a pointer dash. Um, question, same type because they all point to elements in an array. Uh, in this example, yes, but generally that's the rule. If, if you do a pointer arithmetic in a pointer, the resulting expression is also of pointer type. Okay, question Nicole, do you need to take into account the memory for a double like move three? We will come into, yeah, that this is happening in the background. So you don't need to take care about this in pointer arithmetic. The compiler will do this for you, Nicole, and, and we will see now some examples of how the compiler is able to do this. So pointer is still pointing to four node seven. That's correct, uh, Sarah, a pointer didn't change. That's correct unless you say a pointer equal a pointer plus three. Good. Okay, good. So what if I subtract instead of adding? So now I have a pointer is pointing at four again. Then what would happen is I want to subtract two. So now I'm resulting into here some pointer that has the value of a pointer minus two, right? then this would be pointing to the value of two. Again, it's still a, a pointer of type double and it has the value of this. Good. I can also do dereferencing exactly similar to addition. So I've changed this to 10. That means that two now will become 10. Good. Perfect. Another thing you can do is you can do the pre-increment or post-increment for pointer. Then you can say a pointer, uh, plus, so plus plus a pointer or a pointer plus plus, what you would do here is you take the a pointer, increment it by one, so originally it's at four, then you're incrementing it by one, it will, but now you increment the a pointer itself. So now a pointer is going to change. So now it's not going, it's no longer pointing to four. If you do this line, it's going to point to five. And then you take the value and assign 10 into it. So that means the five now will become 10. Good. Perfect. Okay, so we said this in the, in the, not the last slide, the slide before, is if you subtract two pointers, then you get the difference between the subscripts of the array, right? So let's have an example for this to make sure we understand it. So I declare uh, an, an int uh, pointer. Let me see if you guys all see my slides here. Okay, perfect. Everything is as expected. Good. So um, if, if I declare an array uh, of ends that has 10 elements from 10 to 19 or whatever, then I define two pointers now, A pointer, B pointer. I assign A pointer to B pointing at A8. A8 in this case is this one. And then B pointer is pointing to A3, which is this one. And then I would say I equal A pointer minus B pointer. The first thing to observe is here I is an int, right? And what you always subtracting two pointers will, would give you an int because an address is basically a decimal value. It's a positive decimal value at the end. 
then subtracting these two, what you would expect to get? Can someone imagine what we might have as a result? Five. Yes, if this is element three and this is element eight, then subtracting the two pointers is equivalent to subtracting the two indices, which gives you five. That's correct. So the rule here is uh, subtracting two pointers from an array, you just get the difference between the indices. But how this happens? Because Nicole asked it like, wouldn't I have to take care of, for example, if this is an int array, each element has four bytes. That means if you look into the difference, so let's, let's discuss this in a little bit of detail. Assume the starting address here is zero, right? So what would be the address of 11? What do you think? Four, perfect. And then eight. And then this one is going to be 12. And then 16, 20, 24. And then you have 28 and then 32. Then you have 36. These are the addresses in decimal value for this array because each element has four bytes. Then that means B pointer in fact has the value of the address 12. A pointer has the value of address 32. Maybe the, the thing that comes to the mind in the, in, in the first, at the first glance is that if you subtract these two, you should be getting 20, right? But what happens in reality is given that this is a pointer of int, the C compiler, the C language knows that each element that the pointer is pointing to has four bytes. So you divide by four and then now you get five. This is how really you get the five, right? You subtract the absolute values of the addresses, but then you divide by the type of the variable that the pointer is pointing to. This is a general rule, right? Here we divided by four because this was an int, but the, if these were uh, a type of double, you would be dividing by who, whatever the size of the double in your machine, like for example, eight, right? If it was a character, then you divide by one, right? So, so this- So it's just a coincidence that the array goes up by one. It's, it, I, I would say this is what always happens, right? I, I mean, it's, 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 I would say it's, it's a, we cannot call it a, a coincidence because this, it usually, it's, it always happens like that, that array indices go one by one. Uh, but maybe what we can say is that these are completely two different independent ways, but end up giving you the same result, right? Sure. Yeah, thanks, Nicole. So this is a general rule. So you subtract both pointers and then you divide by the size of the type that the pointer is pointing to. Good. In our case, the int example we, we have already discussed. So you have uh, 20 divided by four, which gives you the, the five. Good. Now let's have another example here uh, that we, we, we kind of discuss more the, the, the rules of pointer arithmetic that we discussed. So we declare uh, a pointer of int that has five elements, 10 to 50. And then we declare a pointer that is pointing to the array is this a legal assignment? We said before in one of the array lectures, someone asked me, can I use the array name? And I said, no, don't use the array name of any, in any expression. But now we are using the array name itself, right? But back then I said, we will come into this later because the array name, now we understand that the array name is a pointer itself to the first element. And assigning a pointer to a pointer is a valid pointer arithmetic operation. And this is how uh, we can do this, right? Because it refers to, to an address. Aaron is saying because it's a pointer, um, because it refers to an correct. Aaron, this is valid. Perfect. So this is now valid because of, of, of this reason. You are sending a pointer to a pointer. And then if you try to print f this, uh, first of all, what is this? What I'm trying to print here? What do you think we would have as an output? Ten, perfect, because this is the dereferencing operator. Sorry, let's do this. This is the dereferencing operator, which gives you the value that B is pointing to, and because A is a pointer to the first element, B also would be a pointer to the first element. Someone was asking what what, what does the asterisk mean? I guess 
if you are asking about this line, you you, you might have not listened to the last or or, or uh, came to the last lecture. So I would say this is why it's very important to don't leave lectures like accumulate because in this lecture we are building on what we discussed last lecture and asterisk is here is used in two different ways the first one is defining a pointer which is in line two the second one is it's called dereferencing operator or value of operator where you access the value that the address is pointing to so as i said b is pointing to the first element then this asterisk is getting you the value that the b is pointing to which is 10. Okay? now if i increase b by one b plus plus first of all if i try to print this one what is the difference between this printing and this printing here i'm printing a decimal but here i'm printing a pointer type which is an address right and these two are different so here you would get the address of this one because you moved b here right by doing the increment and then incrementing b by another two you would also be moving b here so if you try to bring the value of b this will give you 40 right so let's see what's happening if we have an for example our a array is is these are the addresses in the memory that your value is declared in as we can see every element has four bytes starting from 00 to 03 for example and then 04 to 07 this is the first element second element third element etc then at the beginning by assigning b to a you you make b pointing to the first element of the array afterwards if you try to print the value then it gets you the first element if you try to increment you increment by one but because we know that b is a pointer of type int so the compiler at the end will increment by four right so it will move to this address so when you say b plus plus the compiler will take this and say I'm going to say b equal b plus the value which is supposed to be one but then multiply this by the size of the type right which in this case is four this is why you increment by by four good and then at the end b plus two will move into into here how come b equal b plus 2 wouldn't b get 50. good abigail because we are not if you try that's a good question because we are not we are not first of all it shouldn't be 50 it should be 40 if, if you think because we incremented by one and then by two but we don't get the value at the end i guess if this is the, the essence of your question because we print the address this is why i said there is a big difference between printing the value that the pointer is pointing to by doing the dereferencing and only printing the address itself. Here we are using the pointer specifier. Here we are using the decimal specifier. Good. Let me see other questions. What would happen if you did A plus, we will come into this mark, but that's not allowed. You cannot change the value of A. It's a static point. We'll come into this. It's a constant pointer. Good. Okay, so let's let's move forward. So uh, building on top of uh, Mark's question, name of the array. We said the name of the array is a pointer to the first element. This is why it's uh, for pointer type, but it's not variable. And this is why you cannot operate on it. It's a constant pointer, which means you cannot change, right? So it's a kind of a special type. You cannot modify it. So if you do something like ASX, you declare an array of type N to six elements. You assign your pointer to uh, the address of A1, good. But then if you try to say a equal b or any value that has a in the left side that is going to change a this will give you a syntax error that's not allowed in c why because this is a constant pointer array name is defined in the background of the c compiler as a constant pointer that you cannot change so any pointer arithmetic done in the pointer name is going to be a syntax error i hope this answers your question mark good so another example, assume that I, I define uh, an int array of, of six elements. I would have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then AA again is a pointer to the first element. So if you try to say AA 
plus i. Now I'm not changing a a, I'm just adding into it. This is equivalent to say I want to access element a i. For example, a a plus two, this would take you to a a two, right? Here. Similar to what we have done in the pointer. So it's a very simple pointer arithmetic, right? The same thing, you can do the array name using dereferencing. So this is equivalent to a a i. Perfect. So this might be a little bit confusing. We can now refer to array elements in many ways, right? So let's let's stop for a second and try to consolidate these. What are the different number of ways to access elements in an array, given that now we understand that these are pointers and the array name is just a pointer to the first element? We have so far discussed four different ways. So let's let's see these ways, right? Okay, so what I'm doing here to explain these different ways is I'm declaring an array, I'm declaring a pointer, and I'm assigning this pointer to the first element. So what I have done here is this is your array A. We said A is a pointer to the first element. In the third line, I'm assigning B to A. So B also will be a pointer to the first element. Good. So let's see how can I access a certain element AI. The first way is the simple way that we understand that you guys know from Python or MATLAB or any other language, you just do the indexing way. So it's called array subs subscript notion or notation because you, you, you just say the array name and then you state the index. Good, that's, that's an easy one. The second one that can use the array name, which we have seen from last slide, is the pointer offset notation using the array name. So you just say A is a pointer to the first element, Adding i into it will take you to the address of the a i, and then you do dereferencing, right? All the four methods are equivalent, by the way, right? So they give you exactly the same value, but they are different ways of accessing certain elements. And then these two ways are using the array name. We have another two ways that can use the pointer b itself. I can say similar to a plus i, I can say b plus i because b is and a are pointing to the same place, or I can simply do b i as well. Right, so it's, it's a pointer subscript notation instead of an array subscript notation. So these are the four different ways of accessing element AI, uh, and this can uh, be applied to uh, in integer uh, arrays, floating points. It, it doesn't really matter of the type, right? It's just a matter of how we understand pointers. So let me see if there are questions. Aaron. I echo some question in the chat earlier about what if you do add two pointers from two different arrays? That's an excellent question, Aaron. Sorry for missing this earlier. Uh, I, uh, sometimes I, I miss questions because you guys answer things, but it, it's my bad. So uh, what if you do add two pointers from two different arrays? First of all, we should see if this is uh, correct from the syntax point of view. And the second is what is going to result in. The first thing is adding two pointers is a valid pointer arithmetic operation, good? If they are of the same type, so there are two arrays of the same type, then you will do the regular pointer arithmetic that you would do. If they are of different type, this will not be synt uh, syntaxly uh, valid. But what is the value that is resulting? This would be something that is garbage because most probably it's outside even the range of the two arrays. So now you, you don't do something meaningful with it. Right? But it might be valid if both pointers are the same type. Yan Hao, what if B equal and A5, what is B1 going to be? An excellent question, Yan Hao. We will come into these things now, right? So uh, I have some examples for this, but maybe directly to answer your question, it would be directly like this. B first would have the address of A5, and then B1 is equivalent to Axing the element of B plus one, then now B will be pointing to, uh, or B one is going to be pointing to A six, right? Just like as a direct answer to your question. Okay, good. So these four ways you guys need to understand pretty well, and the, you need to know that they are equivalent because it's very important. So if if we have questions, let's see. Um, Salah, why does B I work? Doesn't B point to A zero? Yes, but B I, it's like A I as well. why does A I work? A is pointing to the first element as well, right? Because given that B is pointing to the first element of an array, A I and B I are both equivalent to saying B equal B plus I, 
and A is equal A plus I, which in fact we do in the other two ways, and then you do the differencing, right? Good. So let's, let's see an example to make sure we understand that four different ways. Again, I declare an end pointer that has two, four, six, eight, nine, uh, a, a, a pointer to an end that is pointing to the first element of the array. And let's see what happens. First of all, by having the first line, B is pointing to A, which is also the first element. B plus one is pointing to whatever element. B plus four is also pointing to the fourth element, right? And then if I do something like uh, B equal, or oh, is this a chicken thing? I need to interchange to refer to arrays. Yeah, so what, what we have, what, what we write here is that using B or the address of A plus zero, which is uh, first, the address of the first element, both are equivalent. The reason for this is by assigning B equal A, you are pointing to the first element, right? So you apply the regular pointer addressing rules, which is you are pointing to a certain address in memory. If you increase, you would be moving forward in memory. It happens to be that this is an array, so you can access them exactly the same way that you access your array. For example, if, in, if instead of saying A4, which is our first method in the last uh, slide, you can use B4, which is the second method, or you can say B plus four and then do dereferencing, or even A plus four and then do dereferencing. These are the four different ways we discussed in the last slide. What if B points to the second element and you do B L, what would that give? Yeah, Salah, this is completely equivalent to Yan Hao question, which is if you are pointing to a, a certain element, let's say B instead of saying in B equal A, I would say equal the address of A of two, right? And then that means B would be here now instead of here. Then if you say B1, then this is B1 and this is B2. And there are so many tricks of doing these things, making a pointer point to a middle of an array and then deal with this as if it's a separate array, right? Because here, as if you are saying B is pointing to an array that is starting here, right? And B1 is going to be eight, B2 is going to be nine, etc. Hopefully this answers the question. And we have more examples about this in fact, because this is one of the tricks that is very common in pointers. Okay. One thing that is mentioned here again, maybe for the second time today, is that you don't have array boundary checking or generally memory boundary checking in C, which means if you try to access an element that is outside your array uh, scope, you might destruct something or destroy something or your system might crash, right? Here, B plus five is outside the scope because the maximum element is B plus four, right? Because you have only uh, zero to four elements. And that means overwriting this value, you are, you are overwriting some, something outside of your declared array, which might destroy something. Good. Okay. So understanding these pointers, let's see how much time we have left. Good. So understanding these pointer and array relationship, now we have more rich ways of dealing with arrays in C. Previously, we looped through an array, maybe from the first lecture, using a for loop that iterates through indices, right? But we can do this exactly using pointers, right? Now we kind of understand this. So let's see how we can loop through an array using different, different methods. This is the old method we have tried in the second lecture by reading 20 elements. Remember this, you will find this maybe in, in, in topic one lecture. We, we wanted to read 20 elements from a user. So we did a for loop that is going from zero to 20. And then we do a scanf, right? And then we take the elements in, uh, in array index i, one by one. Perfect. Another way of doing this, I might say, I'm going to start with a pointer that is pointing to the first element. Each time I'm going to increase the pointer by one and I'm going to stop at 20 because I know that I have 20 elements. And then now you would do dereferencing to print whatever the pointer is pointing to. So in the first iteration, B is pointing to A0. In the second iteration, B plus one is going to point to A1 and you do dereferencing. In the third iteration, B plus two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is completely equivalent to saying the exact same for loop and then you do the brain TF for AI. Is there any question here? Is that not clear? Please ask, right? Okay, no more questions. Good. So 
just the explanation, as we said, the first loop is using the normal way of doing the array indexing uh, notation by using eyes and index. Why the second loop is using the pointer and doing some pointer arithmetic to increase the pointer by one and then do dereferencing to access the elements of the array. Good. So good, let me see if there are questions. Yan Hao, for the second statement, does it l let b equal a for every loop? Let's go back here and see Yan Hao what you mean. So remember for a for loop, you have three parts. The first one is only the initialization condition, right? For example, does, so let's, let me ask your question in a different way, Yan Hao. Does this loop allows i equals zero for every iteration? No, right? It's just your starting point. Exactly the same thing here. So given that we understand this, let's discuss another thing that we discussed before and we kind of increase our understanding of it. Remember we said passing any value to a function is going to be by value, right? So passing a, an integer uh, variable, a double variable to any function is going to be by value, which means what? It means that the function modification to this variable will not reflect in the caller. What if I wanted to change it? I'm going to pass it by reference. So either pass a pointer to this variable, which we have done in last lecture, or pass it by reference by having the AND operator, good, which we also tried before. Great, this is for, for all variables. And we said, except for arrays, because arrays, once you pass them, they are passed by reference by default. Can someone remember, we said before the reason, like why arrays are passed by, by, uh, by reference by default, you don't need to do anything extra. What is the reason for that? Why a function is, if it takes an array as an input, and, and you guys have seen this in lab one and lab two as well. Function have only one output. Yes, that's the reason why you pass it as an input, uh, Kurt, but what I'm asking is why the function is able even to modify the array. It's an address already, perfect, that's correct. Because we said the array name itself is an address. So that means you pass the elements of the array by, by reference, by default, right? So if you go back to lab one, you find that we passed, for example, I guess for, for the perfect uh, numbers question, we passed the actual array and it has been modified by the, your code and it reflects in the test cases, right? So, Another way of looking into this is the array name is a pointer to the first element. And by passing a pointer to a variable, like what we have seen in last lecture, you are passing the variable itself by reference, right? So here, if we have an example of a function, let's call it anything f1, and this f1 is taking an array as an input and some end value. And then here, I'm passing this array, which is an to this function. This is the caller of the function then A is going to be mapped to this array. Any modification that is happening to this array inside the function is going to reflect in the main, right? This is simply we have what we have seen in lab one and, and, and in previous lectures as well. Another way of looking into this, which is a completely equivalent way, is I don't write the prototype of the function as taking an array as an input. I would rather say it takes a pointer of type int as an input. Does this make any change? In fact, no. Why? Because we know that A itself is still a pointer to the first element, which is doing this. As you can see, this code is exactly the same as this one. So the main did, didn't change at all. But in one, uh, in one of them, which is the one on the left, we pass the array name to a function that is expecting an array, traditional, right? And in the second one on the right, we pass the array name to a function that is expecting a pointer as an input. And the code itself is completely the same, right? Nothing changed. Is there any question here? This is also kind of confirming or emphasizing on the fact that the array name can be looked as either the array or the pointer to the first element. Let me know if there are questions here. Okay, good. I had a quick question. Can I yeah, ask? Yes, go ahead, Arjun. Um, so I was wondering then if you were to call both of those functions, <clears throat> when you put in your arguments in the call, 
um, in, in your main function when you call F1 or F2, you could put in the array name in both cases and it would work. Exactly what we have right now, right? So in the list, yeah. we add, yeah, good. So what is the question then? Well, no, I'm saying, so if you called F1 in main because you wanted to run it, or if you called F2, in either case, you would only ah, have to put in the array name and it would run both. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Completely correct. Uh, com completely correct. And this is only what we change. So for example, if you do here F1, A and N, this is exactly that, right? So uh, you, you are correct. Like the array name, it's like ha uh, the array name has two faces, right? So right. the one face is the array itself. The second face is a pointer, right? Okay. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Okay. So, so far, this is emphasizing that the array name and the pointer is the same thing, right? But I want you to, so we said one, one difference so far, which is that the array name is a pointer, but it's a constant pointer. So you cannot modify. That's good. But there is another difference is that dealing with these things in, as input parameter to a function, taking either a pointer or an array is a completely equivalent thing, right? But when we try to declare the array, you cannot declare it like that because someone say if the array is a pointer and the pointer is an array, can I just declare the array using a pointer? No. Why? Because doing this, okay, first of all here, this is a regular way of defining an array. Perfect, you're saying allocate please to me three elements in your uh, memory, each one of them is an int. So it makes sense. Why this has a syntax error? Let's understand. What I'm doing here, I'm saying, I want to define a pointer of type int, but a pointer of type int, what value it would have? The pointer itself would be an address, right? So it cannot have these end values. And also it's, it's supposed to point to a single end value, which is going to be a single end. It doesn't point to three elements at once, right? This is why you cannot do this in this way. So in other words, a pointer and the array name is perfect the same thing when you declare them inside the prototype of a function, like what we have done here. And the reason is you are going to get a pointer anyway from your caller, as we were saying it as, as, as Arjun was, was uh, also saying. But defining or declaring something outside the function prototype, you want to initialize your array values, right? Then now that's okay because you already declared three places in memory. So this, this line here is doing this. Say, please reserve three places in memory. Each one of them is an int. So that means you reserve 12 bytes. And then A is going to be the address of the first element and then initialize to 135. All makes sense. Why the second statement doesn't make sense at all, because what you say is, please define a pointer of type n to me, this is called q, that means it should hold an address, and this should point to a single end value or a variable of type n. But now you are giving three, right? This doesn't make sense, good? So now the rule is you cannot use the pointer to declare an array, right? What you can do instead is after defining your array, for example, in the first line, you do what we have done before, which is say A. That means now Q will get the, also the address of the first element. Good. Let me see if there are questions here. Aaron, if you know that you want an array as a parameter, should we use array instead of pointer to stop introducing future bug? Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's one way of looking into it, uh, Aaron, but another way, and, and I don't think we'll have time to touch on this, this lecture, but next lecture we're going to discuss for sure, which is dealing with dynamic memory allocation. If you deal with dynamic memory allocation, you would defining your arrays from the beginning as pointers anyway, right? So, so let's stop on this, but to answer your question, you might be correct in normal cases, yes. Okay, good. So pointers and strings, last thing to discuss before we stop, uh, before dynamic memory allocation. So now let's put the pieces together. Arrays we discussed, and then we said characters, arrays of characters are special type of arrays that we can build from them. So let's look into this like this way. We had two lectures for arrays, and then this took us to arrays of characters. And arrays of characters took us to discussing strings, right, in C. And also pointers 
and arrays we have been discussing this lecture. That means now what about pointers and strings, right? This is what we are kind of looking at right now. So this kind of putting the pieces together. Strings in C are arrays of characters. Pointers can deal with arrays. So let's see how pointers deal with strings in C. So here I'm defining a character array called str string that has that takes 20 characters and doing the scan f. We have seen this example in, in one of the lectures. Now I can initialize it. We have seen this when discussing the strings. You can initialize your array using this string notation in C. And that means now the first term is h, the second is e, l, l, o, and the last one is what? The null character, right? After, after the exclamation mark. And then, now what about, I want to define a pointer of type character, and then I want to take doing a scan f, for example, or initialize it, doing something like this. With the information we discussed so far in lecture, in the, past, in, in the last two slides, this is going to, to give you a syntax error. Why? Can someone explain to me why? What is the rule we said doing such thing is going to give you a syntax error. Is there any idea? So remember, we said you cannot declare an array using the pointer notation because the pointer is going to reserve a single location of type int or character or whatever, while the array will have multiple values, right? And we have looked into this in the end case. Remember, Characters of ar arrays of characters, exactly the same thing, right? So here, what I'm doing is I'm defining a pointer that is called S. This should, had, should hold an address to a certain uh, variable. Here, it's of type character, which means it's one byte. But now I'm giving it four bytes. Again, not possible because you only declared a certain thing in memory, right? So that's, that's not allowed. Good. So which means you cannot modify, right? But the only change you would have for strings in C is it doesn't give you a syntax error. It declares the array, but it makes it non-modifiable. So, and that's, that's the trick about dealing with pointers and strings. And that's the reason why we have it as a separate slide, right? Overall, defining an array using a pointer is not allowed. Why? Because you don't have sufficient place in memory. But the way you deal with strings in C is it allows you to use the string notation. That means now you declare an array of this G O H N and then it end up with an null character and it makes S pointing to the first element. So it's not going to give you a syntax error. But the, the trick here is you cannot change this. If you try to modify anything in this array, it will give you a syntax error. Why? Because again, it's, it's this array or this string is declared in the read-only memory. And that means you cannot modify. So let's, let's, let's try to understand this in some detail. So what I have done here is defined a, a character pointer. I, I assigned into it the array that has G-O-H-N and then slash null character, which is this one. But we said that this second line here is declaring things in the read-only memory which means if you try to modify any of the value by doing dereferencing, you will get a syntax error or, or sometimes segmentation fault. It depends on, on your compiler type, right? The reason is this is in a read-only memory which you are not allowed to modify. So to summarize two things, generally don't use a pointer to declare an array. When you come to strings, because this, before coming into strings, don't use a pointer to declare an array because it will give you a syntax error, not allowed anyway. If you talk about strings like this, the special rule is it's going to be allowed, but it's going to be a constant or read only string, which means you cannot modify its elements using dereferencing. So a question to you before you leave, and we'll stop here. What if I want to declare this thing and make a pointer pointing into it and be able to modify it? What I would do? This is something that you can do right now with the knowledge you know from the string uh, lecture. I want to define a string that I can modify, what I can do.
Is there any idea? Constant? No, I want to modify it, uh, so I don't want it to be a constant, right? So what you can do is instead of defining this using pointers, you would define your string using the regular way, right? Which is saying, I'm defining, for example, this that has uh, here, it's five elements, right? So you define a character of, uh, uh, sorry, an array of characters, which is another word string. And then you say S equal, let's call this something different, S1, S1 equal John. And in this case, you define a string using the regular way, which means you are able to modify. And then the extra step is what if I want to use the pointer? What to do to make the pointer S pointing to this, this string? What can I do? You can just simply say S equal, let's see the chat. Yes, S equal S1, exactly. Let's just play together. Is there a different way? So that's correct, that's sure. Is there a different way? Or Sarah, like defining it as a character, that's, that's also correct. I'll come into questions, Karina, once we, 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 we finish this uh, discussion, but is there a different way of making S pointing to this uh, uh, character array than S equal S1? I can just simply say, let me see if someone said something. Yes, exactly, Mark. Make it the address of the first element. So say something like and S1, zero. This is also correct, right? And by doing this, you would be able to do the step that you have done. What is the difference between this here and what we have done here is you declared your array using the regular way, which means it's re uh, writable. So it's being declared in the read and write memory. While declaring your string using the array, uh, the, the pointer is only done as a read only. Good. So let's stop here and I'll take questions and, and uh, you guys are, are free to leave. Thanks everyone and let's continue uh, next lecture. Okay, so let me see where did I stop about questions. If you know that you want to analyze a parameter, should you use an A instead of point? Okay, this is Karina. Why don't you need the and? Okay, that's, let me go back to this point. So here, um, in this example, I guess, Karina is saying why I didn't need an and here. So again, because and is giving you an address. So what is the reason of using the and? If, we, if, for example, we are passing an end variable to a scanf, the reason is you want scanf to modify this variable. And and is the address operator, right? So we are passing the address of this end variable. While we said that the, the array name itself, which is here str, is itself an address, right? So if you look into the memory and you are defining this str thing, str itself is an address. This is why we don't need the and operator. Okay. Um, Sandy, what if you assign only one character to the pointer, not four? Uh, so Sandy, when we assign, okay, that's a good question. So, so let's look into this here. By doing this, I'm, I'm not assigning the four characters into S. I'm assigning only the address of the first element, which is a single character. And to understand this is, S is nothing other than a pointer that is pointing to a single character. So at no time and by no means, S, the pointer can point to the whole character array, right? It's only pointing to a single element. So at the beginning, it's going to point to the first element. And then afterwards, by adding it, it moves forward. So it will never point to the four at a time, right? Can I ask a follow up to what you just covered? Go ahead, Arjun. So if you declared a character pointer, like say your example was uh, char, uh, like character pointer S is equal to John. If you declared it as equal to just the letter J, could you modify it or is it still read memory only? Okay, that's also an excellent question. Thanks a lot. So let's go back here and discuss this point because I, uh, it's a good one. So let's, 
So if we do something like this, th th we should differentiate between two different things. Let's forget about this line for now. Here I can do one of two things. S equal J or S equal J. And here it should be the differencing thing. So if you say that, so what I mean is in C, there is a big difference between strings and characters when defining, um, when defining uh, uh, like immediate values. If you use the double quote, it's going to be a string. If you use a single quote, it's going to be a character, right? Assigning a character to whatever the pointer is pointing to is valid because it's a single character, but in fact, you have to make it point to something first because we didn't initialize it. But if you define this like this, even if it's a single character, remember, we always have another character, which is uh, like the, the, the null character. So even if, if your string consists of a single character, it's still a string. So that's also still causing all the same issues with read only, right? But here you are doing, you are just simply saying, okay, something like the following character, uh, let's call it CH, and then character pointer S, and then S equal and CH, and then here you do something like S equal J. That's a completely normal way of dealing with pointers of characters because I just made S point to a character and then I did a dereferencing and then assigned this character a single character. So that's all perfect. It has nothing to do with strings at all. And also it has nothing to do with arrays, right? But here, if you do something like that, using the double quotes, then by an implicit way, you are telling the compiler that this is not a single character, even if it has J only. It's an array of characters or a string because you have J and you have the null character at the end, right? So you see that there is a big difference between using the double quotes and the single quote. And sometimes people get confused because of that. Good, hopefully I, I answered your question, uh, Arjun. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Let me see if I don't want to miss questions. Um, so, oh, I guess I should start from the end then. Let me see. Singda, what if we just use double quotes, an empty one? It's still a string, Singda, but it's an empty string. So the, the rule is using double quotes means by default a string. Uh, okay, thanks, Mark. Vaito, when are we going to start Java? Once we finish C byte, soon, soon, hopefully after we finish. So the, what, what we have remaining in C is pointers, pointers to pointers, dynamic memory allocation, and then structures. And then after this, we can start Java. The midterm will only be in C. The midterm will not contain any Java. Nico, uh, does Lab2 use pointers? No, not at all. Uh, Lab2 doesn't use pointers, Nico. I, I, I never post a lab that, assumes a knowledge that we didn't cover yet in, in, in lecture. So don't worry about that. Um, can I ask a quick question? Yep, sure. Uh, can you go back one page earlier? Okay, let me go back to my slides one page earlier. But yeah, I, yeah. I'm not kind of sure what is the third line doing. The scan F for the point. Is it this one? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, what does it actually do? Yeah, good. That's that's a good point. So, you declared uh, an array pointer. Uh, sorry, okay. an array pointer. You declare a pointer of type character, and then you pass that, and then you are supposed to get something from the user input as of type of string and assign it to B. Yeah. The problem is you didn't reserve any space by just saying this, right? You only reserve the space of the pointer variable itself. But whatever is pointing to is not yet defined, right? So if you do this, this what is written here is might, so in fact, I have seen two different things. One compiler might give you an error or a warning saying that you didn't 
uh, you didn't specify any memory that that this like um, data is going to be saved to, and then it doesn't proceed with the building process. And others might go through it because it's allowed in C. But the point is, it can this data can be written anywhere because remember, B at the beginning might hold any garbage value, right? Yeah. And this garbage value can be also pointing to anywhere in memory, right? Which means whatever you read here can be get written into somewhere in memory that you don't even know, which can use some destruction to you as well. That's why here we have a comment saying, oh, this might be, because you didn't reserve any space in the memory yourself, this might use a failure or destruction of data in your, in um, your memory. Like how does, it, how does it differ to the false line? Like whatever you're going to put is a string, right? Like the false statement also you are ah, declaring okay, as okay. is so, equal okay, to John. So you are saying this one and this one, right? The yeah. difference between this one. That's a good point. This one is a fixed, this why it's read only, right? You cannot allow it to modify. So this yeah. one is like a constant string, constant. right? So you uh, know okay. from the beginning, you know what is the size here. And this is why C might be lean a little bit about this by saying, okay, you give me a constant immediate value of a string. I know how many characters you need. Then I'm going to assign this to the read only and I'm not going to allow you to modify. The problem here is you don't know how many characters you are going to read from your user input, right? Uh, doesn't, doesn't it work after you type in some value such as a word? Yeah, but that's a variable, right? This, this happens during runtime, right? So, so the, see the difference. This is a static value that happens at the compilation time. Maybe we didn't discuss this before in details, but let's discuss two things. There are two different ways of, of looking into any problem in programming. What happens statically, and when we say statically means during compilation without running the program itself, and what happens during runtime, which is you already had the binary, you are running it, and then now there are some kind of running time operation, right? So this one, John, the compiler is aware of statically, so offline without even running the program, right? Because you have it as a fixed value. So it's called static value. While here, what you are saying is the user will input something, which means it's during runtime, right? Mm -hmm. But all the memory allocated to your program is allocated once you launch it, right? Oh, it's, I see. It, it doesn't wait sense. until you're, it's, it's not runtime. We will see in the coming lecture, if I want a memory during runtime, what I can I do, which is dynamic memory allocation, right? And we are going to talk about that later. Yeah, exactly. But, but, but now you, don't, you cannot leave your user to input anything that is, for example, if I allow this, a user can input full pages of characters, right? Yeah. yeah. And just destruct the whole memory. For like, it's like a, a DOS attack to your memory, right? So this is dynamic, but this is static. And this is the main difference between both. I see. That really makes sense. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Yano. Thanks. Okay, let me look into the chat. Sandy, will there be a sample test for the midterm? I will try, Sandy, by May end of, of this week to post something on Avenue. Um, Fido, when are we going to start Java? Okay, lab question, Nicole. Does lab to, I already said that. Uh, Karina, if you make an array of character, is the last item... Uh, no, okay, Karina, that's also a good question. I'm not sure if you are still around, but in, in the string lecture, which is the lecture before the last one, uh, we said there is a difference between two things. Arrays of characters, which are normal arrays that hold character values, and strings, which are also arrays of characters, but they are ended up by this null character. So if you don't end your array of character with a null operator, that means it's not a string, right? So you can still define a character array without having a null character at the end, and it's, it's fine, but you cannot deal with it as string, right? Nicole, does S point to J or the whole thing? Oh, no, just, just the first element, Nicole. Like always a pointer is not, so the pointer doesn't point at all to the whole thing. It just points to the first element or whatever element you are pointing to. I don't, can we sudo change read only memory? No, even with sudo, like read only memory is, is not user privilege, even if you, have, if you are an administrator, uh, Aaron, but that's, that's, that's a funny question, thanks. Sandy, what if you assign only one character to the pointer, not four? Uh, ah, yeah, this is, I guess, I, the one that I was, I was answering and Arjun commented on. 
Karina, why don't, okay, I already answered this. If you know that you want an array as a parameter, should I, okay, perfect. So I guess these are all the questions. Let me see if there are new ones. Jan, how does all array ends with, I'm not sure, sure. Okay, so the rule is, no, not all arrays, because you can have arrays of int, so they, end up, they don't end up with a null character. Also, arrays of characters, they don't end up with a null character. Only arrays of characters that you want to deal with them as strings. So the null character is only a feature in C that allows you to deal with the strings, right? I guess all this confusion, guys, is coming from that maybe you didn't well study the strings lecture. So please revisit this, go through it. We have many examples answering these questions. And if you still have questions, maybe you ask in coming lectures or during office hours. Uh, okay, so if there are no more questions, then I would say um, we end up for today and, and see you all uh, tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. I get there is something on the chat. Oh, thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Bye-bye.